probability. On that not so bleak hillside, rocky though, there's a bird out there singing a goddamn rondelay. There's a bird out there. Also broken bottles, tiles, bricks, trash, flowers, purple, yellow and white, many iris, thorns, and rosemary. The hillside is mainly a gray green. The scene, uh, the sea, a bluer green, goes crash below, repeatedly. Crash. A goddamn rondelay. I think she must have built a nest out there. Crash. <coughs> Cutting the mustard. The world and ourselves pass away. We go on and enter the dance. What other chances are there we could think of as already prepared? Malaga port. It saves the city, a provincial other, wise port. How the bloody ships come in, the sheer machinery of docking. Un How we knock the other larger ports to the north, Cadiz and Huelva to the west, loading certain hatches. Creak of crane, the strain of ropes, the rub of hulls, that close smell of sea rotted wood. And the wine in shore, we'll in bars, we'll come to later. Not any dream of release, but real, cold, and flowing. Release we cannot beg or steal, but come to later. Nub of skulls on hillsides, sweating bodies, gypsies under the bridge on beds of Kanya. Closed open mouths of bitches, dull strain of guitars below. The bold song rising, the hips rising, and the swing of the bloody knockers steers the world back home. Mulligan is still a very good port to put into. <coughs> Shay's death. <coughs> Plaza de Portal de Alche in Alicante, wet from last night's rain. It's eight in the morning. The square carries its unintentional message in its ancient ma name made new. Coffee and ensamadas at the kiosk set low center amid the gondoles and palmeras. Grande como el grande no ande. Only two taxis on the square now. A young man stops in one corner at a shop mirror to squeeze a pimple or two on his way to work, looks vacantly at the white blood-flecked excrescence on the thumb and middle finger of his left hand, checks the mirror again, the hope of Spain. By 8.15, there are four taxis on the side toward the port, two on the lateral and five mini-taxis on the side toward town. <coughs> The second coffee, this time black with cognac, goes down more easily. It's also a piece from Alicante, the quality. Stocking footed down the tiled and whitewashed narrow hall, its full length. The light works, so sit and read. On the something 28th, South Yemen tossed out 30 British military hired a year ago when Yemen became independent. Foreign Office sends a stiff note. The Yemenites reply politely that they're saving money. And an outfit called Rutherford Española S.A.A. at 14 General Godet in Madrid will build you a swimming pool shaped like your kidney out of stone and tile.
The rectangles of paper are neatly torn. I tear mine once more, lengthwise, thinking of all the smug accountants in Yemen and how polite they are, and the 30 British advisors out of a cushy job, while I slowly and carefully wipe papers a bit on the slick side. As it ends, it is not just at night when we sleep. There comes a moment in the life that we won't know. We go past it into, or it goes past us. There is a rose and purple cloud to the north reflected in this sunset. I want you all to know I love you very much. Oh, shut up. You are a dead man, for Christ's sake. <coughs> Let me close, uh, close the first set. I'm reading a little over half an hour. So I don't know, uh, if, we, if we have s short sets, can we keep it? Uh, maybe we can do three if everyone can stand it. This last piece is called The Net of Place. Hawk turns into the sun, over the sea, wings red, the turn upward, mountain behind me. I have left those intricate mountains, my face now to the simple Mediterranean, flat, small boats, gulls, the blue. Old hawk is still there, though, as there are foxes on these barren mountains. Old man in a beret, 62 perhaps, came into the village bar the other day, two skins and one fox unskinned. You hunted these down? I hunted them. They come in closer in winter, seeking food. There isn't much up there. Rocky headland down into the Gulf of Valencia. My windows face north. He was a hawk. I turned back to the Rockies, to the valley swinging east, Glenwood to Aspen, up the pass. It is darkest night, the hour before dawn. Orion, old hunter, with whom I may never make peace again, swings just over the horizon at five o'clock as I walk. The mountains fade into light. Being together there was never enough. It was my thing. Nothing of importance, the reach, was ever said. I turn and say farewell to the valley, those hills. A physical part of well-being's been spent and left there by mountains. Valley, all, never to be there again, never. It is an intricate dance to turn and say goodbye to the hills we live in the presence of. When mine dies of its time, it is not the place goes away. Now the hawk turns into the sun, circles over the sea, defines me. Still the stars show through. Orion in winter rises early, summer late, dark before. Dawn during August, during which day the sun shines on everything, defines it, shadows I do not see. I rise early in every season. The act defines me, even if it is not my act. Hawk circles over the sea. My act, saying goodbye finally. Being here is not enough, though I make myself part of what is real. Recognize me, standing in that valley, taking only the embraces of friends, taking only my farewell 
with me. Stone from my mountains, your words are mine at the end. That's enough for a second, I guess. Can we break now? <coughs> um, for a second set, I'll read some things that you can get a hold of if you want to from uh, the two books that are now in print. Maybe if I start on the other book, I can pick up on that one better. I don't know, it's, uh, um, this piece uh, called Nightcappy should really be printed with the uh, cartoon, which we could, I guess no one could get permission for or something. Anyway, Cappy's a cartoon character who wears his cap all the time, and that's why he's called Cappy. And uh, in this particular uh, strip, uh, you see him at a party of some sort. He's got a glass of wine in one hand, and there's a, uh, there's a plate of sandwiches on the floor in front of him, and he's enjoying the wine. And this gentleman comes up behind him with uh, tails and whatnot, and a butler type, and uh, taps him on the shoulder and, and says, uh, and what might you be doing if you don't mind me asking? And Cappy looks over his shoulder with a kind of shit-eating grin and says, uh, I'm a friend of the groom. And the butler's eyes sort of go like Robert Duncan's, you know, like going and, saying, <laughs> and he says, I got news for you, sport. This is a funeral. Okay. <laughs> it's enough background for the poem, anyway. Oh, Danny Lynch be sitting below there in McSorley's, having an India pail and a porter and a bit of conver, Sation and I not joining him, what with his black eye and all. Instead, I come direct up to bed, where the wife do be reading the newspaper and don't even move over for me. I understand what the solution is, but what be the question? He thought it were a wedding, but it was a funeral. So, what is the question, or who is a friend of the groom? McSorley's is, uh, uh, this book is called In Honor About the Premises. It's composed of two sections, roughly called the Ale House Poems and the Bakery Poems. And uh, the Ale House is two doors from me. It's McSorley's on 7th Street. And uh, like most of those poems center around there, the metamorphosis. There's a in the back room. There's a this very large painting of a very naked lady, or there used to be. I I haven't even looked. After a while, you walk through, you don't even see it anymore. You know, I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> the metamorphosis. The lady reclining declines and no mended head know what be her inclination. Still, eyes look out, it are the rights. And the map of Ireland, Ireland free from the center of the sea, it wails, with the northern counties torn off by a passionate hand, is taped to the cupboard wall in that same public room. The glasses bottoms thunk down hard his late hour before closing and some indignant horse, and a roused horse, clambers to its feet, about to become an automobile. <laughs> Motivations one. He gets a job as a waiter, B, because he would like to look at a chef's hat, 
what he misses in the street. The street. The assassination of President McKinley. Uh, this was written on a hangover. <laughs> and toward the front, toward the windows, as, uh, on the wall is a big photograph, which is described in the poem, so I won't describe it to you, uh, of Lower Broadway on... Uh, the day that McKinley was uh, buried. And I was sitting there with this hangover and looking at this and having this terrible uh, poem happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> the assassination of President McKinley. Before Trinity Church on Lower Broadway, 3.30 to 3.35 p.m., while a casket was being lowered into the grave at Canton, Ohio, the portals of giant buildings draped in black, flags flying at half-mast, the street is jammed dead with people, maybe half of the men in bowlers and caps, the other half with their heads bare, some 20 Lex and Columbus Avenue and Broadway trolleys stopped as far back as the eye can see on a muggy day. Most everyone jamming the windows, murmuring or silent, while the bells of Trinity tolled for five minutes. At Jackson Brothers at 66, the first floor windows equally drape the drapers. Black, one of the brothers takes advantage in the back of the store of the dead stop of the new little typist in accounting, makes her bend over the great rolls of fabric in the stockroom, lifts the voluminous skirt, pulls down the sad white bloomers, undoes his fly, spits on the end of his cock, and fucks her the last rite for the assassinated Mr. McKinley, September 19th, 1901. Five minutes of hushed silence, the... Bells booming and schluck, schluck, the soppy petals of cunt, the groans and Tyler Jackson's yell of come is drowned, gone, under the final two strokes of Trinity's bell. Somebody said that wasn't as good as E.E. E. Cummings, but I don't know if it was. <laughs> He, he, huh? uh, Time for literary capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> someone in those lower depths, right? <laughs> Getting a job. How can we stand the soup? How can we love the Pope? How can we put up with the cop? And we do. But plenty of Dante destroys us, that great light over us. And the light enters the asshole, and the asshole enters the office. And the office records it. Somebody fucked up my punch. <laughs> <laughs> Two songs for the op. This is when Joel used to drink seriously. <laughs> <clears throat> Stay drunk, that's my motto. Then you'll never have to know if the girl love you or no. He, 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 nor will she. <laughs> Two. Play guitar, go to the bar, hope there's one hand will caress and undress, but pints to go before you sleep. Har, har, nobody care.
on the rocks. Small Polish, they told in bar, East 7th Street, Saturday nights, is the only one still open after 2 a.m., hence crowded to so proud. Even crowded is cool and quiet. The bowling machine in one corner keeps the score with little clicks, sighs, and bells. The jukebox down the wall turned down from concert size. No blare. The bar packed, tables in the back near empty. Jukebox. Slav, Slovene, Russian, Polish, Hungarian, all that lonely and passioned. Schwarze Sigoyner, the violin cat guts to tear the heart if it be torn already. Whose is not? Midsummer madness by the sea at night. Las olas doblandose siempre. Knees dug into the cool sand. Couples spread out between the rocks, hiding from the beams of police cars. Patrolling boardwalk. He arranges the blanket properly. Properly. Waves slosh among the rocks. One feels an intruder and walks away slowly back. Toward the lights, the light, sur the light surf repetitious, dull in the ear. The lovers will swim forever, the whole night. Coming out of the bar, slosh, the waves, lovers sleep lightly, their hot life away for a while, their arms coming out of the bar, violins, gulls deep on the waves, cry at his back until the door closes. Streets wet, the summer rain. Reflections more shimmering and real than the lights dull surf than any wall where the mind goes blank. last piece from the alehouse called the slogan over the right triangle formed by Stuyvesant Street and Ninth the well-knit blonde in a blue knit dress and the hair piled high crosses on the hypotenuse jiggles two worlds in several hemispheres as she walks <laughs> the trajectory causes a mass cessation of work at a Con Edison <coughs> encampment on one of the other two sides, all orange equipment with dark red flashers, flags at the corners of the encampment wave cheerfully in the Monday morning breeze, all the orange helmets facing the same way, eyes right and clearly, everything else is right, click, click. <laughs> the heels go at an easy pace across Stuyvesant, touch the curb at ninth, jiggle, jiggle. The explanation is printed on the sides of all the equipment, even on one flag. Dig we must. They dig. <laughs> Maybe a couple of the bakery poems. Um, the bakery's at, um, still there. It's on 3rd Avenue between 24th and 25th. And the prices are now up to about, uh, I think the top price of buck 65 or something, where the top price used to be a buck and a quarter, but it's, um, they serve meals. I'll do the first and a middle one, uh, It's called a dull poem for Louis Zukovsky. The thing about this bakery is that I worked in the area for a number of years, and it was just weird. I could never go in the bakery without writing a poem. You know, I mean, like, I, I mean, practically, you know, I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, the, the place used to turn me on in some weird way or another. I, I just couldn't... Uh, I, whenever I was in there, I had to carry paper with me. I've got I've got poems from there that are written down in old paper bags. You know, I mean, like it's uh, I had to have something <laughs> with me <laughs> because it was a place somehow that developed. You know, like all the personnel got into it. You know, like it's, uh, 
my friend Joan go, goes there with me, like every once in a while, she says, that Aunt Ella, that Mary, <laughs> yeah, you know, like they're all there, right, you know, it's <laughs> they don't know the book exists, thank God, you know, so. <laughs> Zen Foods, it says on the truck outside. You have to realize, like, we open a door, you know, uh, like you don't get the printing on the inside of the door, you know, only on the outside. So if you have something that like says frozen foods, and like you open the door at the right point, you know. <laughs> Everything's very visual. <laughs> Excuse me, I just uh, put a lot of juice on my glasses somehow by lighting that last cigarette. Zen Foods, it says on the truck outside, what can be seen through the bakery door, 3rd Avenue and 24th, where it is lunchtime, Saturday. The truck is blocked. A young man with portfolio from the art school next block. He walks very straight, proud walk. Disappeared behind truck where he can see I can't. Two boys making a fire in a can in a vacant lot across the avenue. Extends the depth of one building, but was a half block of tenements a year gone, half the way to 25th. The wood was wet, was set before the truck came in and parked and smoked. No cherries here, no Mickeys there. It's wet. I wonder what there might be in that truck. Zen Foods. Bean sprouts and rice, all of Chinatown's fowl and fish and vegetable. Zen foods, no Mickeys. Does this generation know about Mickeys? Set among coals, wood, fires, and vacant lots, cooked to half raw and eaten with stolen salt, charred skins and all. Even in those islands of still poor Irish there, isolated blocks about the city, no mix here, no cherries there, bean sprouts with rice, and comidas criollas composed of the obscure parts of dead pigs. The bakery's German and serves healthy, bland, middle Europa meals for about a buck. Tender loin tomorrow, goulash today. I bring my own wine. Zen foods. Two elderly men with long overcoats from third-hand shops look at me meanly, leaving, wishing the wine were theirs. Mutter. The boys in the lot appear throwing rocks, broken ignats brick at one another and jeering. No mix here, no crouts there, no. Some seven-year-olds outside the plate glass window are trying to liberate my bicycle. It is too securely locked to a leg of a no-parking sign garnished with meter parking and the meters as well. They try the lamp and go see if some eight-year-old friend has been gifted with a screwdriver. <laughs> The waitress starts again to come on, always a bit crude, that ends. I am returned to the hopeless scene, having the dollar to pay. I pay, leave tip, the Zen Foods truck pulls out. How many crullers? Two. I do two.